Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be rebuilding the carburetors for the KLE build. If you're new here, my name is Sarah. I make motorcycle related content, post on YouTube every Friday. If you like what you see, don't forget to give us a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button down below and check back every Friday for new content. So today is going to be episode 6 of the KLE build and I'm going to be rebuilding these carburetors. You can see, probably see on the bench behind me, the engine has actually still got the carburetors on it. The reason I've got another set of carburetors is I'm actually going to be doing some modifications to this engine and I'm not going to rebuild it as standard. Um, these Kawasaki 500cc twins um, were used in a couple of different bikes at the time one being the KLE and the other one being the GPZ 500. The KLE was a detuned version of the GPZ 500 engine uh, so it had a lower compression ratio and milder cams so they made about 45 to 50 horsepower depending on who you ask and which specs you believe. Uh, the GPZ made about another 10 horsepower on top of that with higher compression heads and a bit more aggressive cam profiles. So I've actually got a GPZ 500 head to put onto this engine. They're a direct fit, so I'm not actually going to be reusing the head. And this is a set of GPZ 500 carbs. They're actually identical carbs, but they are jetted differently. So they've got different main jets in. It was actually as cheap for me to buy another complete set of carbs as it was to just buy two main jets to fit into the other ones. So that's what I did. Picked these up second hand. They're not too dirty, but today, in this episode, I'm going to be stripping them down, rebuilding them. They have been sitting on a shelf for a while. You can probably see there's quite a lot of dirt in there. I haven't had them apart yet, so we will see what they're like. Often some of these screws are seized, so we'll have to see how we get on. The rebuild process for most carburetors is very similar, um, irrespective of what bike it came from. Nearly all these Keyhein CVK carbs are all the same. They just have slightly different ball sizes. Um, and a lot of other other carburetors are, the, are very very similar so the Makunis are a common one and they're also incredibly similar so one of the things you want to do when you're messing around with carburetors is make sure that if there's more than one that you keep all of the parts that belong to one carburetor to one side and all the parts that belong to the other carburetor on the other side I'm going to be completely dismantling these and splitting the bodies I've got my ultrasonic tank here so I'm going to be giving all the bodies an ultrasonic clean as well. I've got two new rebuild kits for the carburetors. They're quite basic rebuild kits, these. So I might end up having to get some other components as well, maybe some other O-rings for the fuel inlets and outlets and things. So we'll have to see. But let's make a start on these and we'll see how we get on. So I've got a tub of solvent on the bench and what you don't want to do is get any of the rubber components, especially the diaphragms in these constant velocity style carburetors soaked in petrol because they, they deform. Uh, the rubber they're made from isn't really designed to be submerged in petrol. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take off all of this pipe work. So we've got, we haven't got so much stuff laying around. So this is a vacuum hose, so there's two vacuum connections, one's blanked off, the other one's open, so I'm going to remove the blanking plug as well. Then we're going to remove these hoses, they're not fuel hoses, these are coolant hoses and on a lot of bikes, uh, coolant hoses uh, run through the carburetors to stop them freezing in cold weather conditions. So are actually fitted with heaters so hot water hot coolant is pushed around these carbs by the cooling system through these hoses and it circulates up into the body and stops this freezing up so we just get rid of all of these hoses as well Some of them are a bit tight because the, the rubber has gone hard over the years. 
And the last hose we want to get rid of is this one. And this is the overflow, the old overflow hose. If the carburetor's flood, this just dumps petrol on the floor, which is lovely. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove both diaphragm covers from the tops of these carbs. Um, and carburetor screws are notoriously soft. And half of the problem with, with these is people use the wrong screwdrivers. Uh, most Japanese bikes and even some Harley carbs, um, if they're made by Kiain, which these are as well, the CVK, CVK carbs, these are a very similar carburetor to use as is used on most carburetor Harleys, although these are much smaller bore. The screws on them are JIS type. They look like Phillips, but they're a different profile on the screwdriver. And if you use a Phillips, use a Phillips screwdriver in these, uh, it's really, really easy to round the heads out. So I've got a JIS screwdriver. If you're going to be working on carbs or you've got a Japanese bike, um, a lot of the screws with crosshead type heads will be JIS, so it's really worth investing in JIS screwdrivers. So let's take all of these screws out of here. I'm just going to get two little tubs so I can keep the parts for each carburetor separate. So we remove this diaphragm top, that's how I've been holding it down because there's a little spring underneath. And then we've got the diaphragm. And be careful if this, this can be stuck in the body sometimes. Just be very careful not to tear it. Also be careful not to damage the needle jet. So, see there. Also beware that sometimes underneath, underneath the needle jet in the slide there are uh, spacers and washers, so be careful not to lose those. We do the same to the other carb. I'm going to replace all these screws when I rebuild with nice new ones because the heads on these have been chewed up quite badly. This particular screw you can see I picked up a flat screwdriver, was seized and the head was jam the head was rounded out, so I just took a hacksaw, cut a slot across it, so I could use a flat screwdriver on it to get hold of it. Again, when you're taking these out, just be careful that you don't rip the diaphragm. They're very easy to tear, and if you tear them, then the carburetors won't work properly and your bike won't run properly. And again, just be careful not to damage that that needle jet. So that's the diaphragms and the slides taken out. It's those slides that make carburetors constant velocity. You might have heard that in the past. But yeah, that's what makes carbs constant velocity is that slide which moves up and down depending on the engine load um, and controls the amount of fuel coming out of the main jet. So the next thing I'm going to do is take the float bowls off the bottom of these carburetors. To do that we have to undo four more bolts on each carburetor, hoping every every bolt comes undone okay. See if I can get those out. So these are the little coolant inlets. You can see they've got a couple of o-ring seals on them probably measure those up and make sure we put new ones in so we avoid any leaks when we reassemble this and a little bit tight sometimes they get a lot of crud around the o-rings so a bit tricky to remove and then we'll just undo the four float bowl screws on each carb that and lift off the float bowl and the float bowl's got a little gasket in it which seals got new ones of those in the rebuild kits always worth always worth fitting new gaskets 
um, if you have the float bowls off your carburetors for any reason just to avoid any fuel leaks uh, we don't want fuel leaks because it can be quite dangerous okay so that's both float bowls removed and now you can see into the carburetors so we've got the, the floats here which have a little valve on them I'll show you that in a moment and then we have the main jet and then we have a slow running and idle jet down in this hole here which you may or may not be able to see so the slow jet controls the mixture up to about a third throttle and at idle and there is fine adjustment for that on the idle screw which is here the main jet controls it at higher engine speeds and at full throttle jets have sizes marked on them and you won't be able to see it on the camera I very much doubt but both of these carburetors have got 130 sized jets in them so I'm going to remove all of the jets from the carbs including the slow idle mixture screws so that we can blow all the passages through on these carburetors with compressed air and I'm also going to be ultrasonic cleaning these carburetors now these idle, this particular idle screw is quite seized and they're very soft they're made of brass I'm just going to squirt a little bit of oil in there if I can't get this out now which it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to sometimes if you work screws backwards and forwards in the thread it depends why they're seized but if you can get a little bit of movement on them if you work them backwards and forwards quite often you can get them to come out these slow mixture screws are things that don't get adjusted very often if at all you can see again these have a very fine point on them there's a tiny little hole in there which that point sits in and allows a very precise amount of fuel passed next thing we'll do is we'll just slacken off the main jets and we'll unscrew those they're both the same so I don't need to worry about muddling these up I'm going to keep them separate anyway and then we need to take the main jet holders out these are also called emulsion tubes and what they do is they allow fuel and air to mix in the tube so there's a couple of holes in the front of the carburetor here which allow air to come through it's this one here allows air to be drawn through around the outside outside of this emulsion tube there's also fuel around this emulsion tube and as air is drawn through it actually aerates the fuel slightly um, but the, the, the main jet controls the amount of fuel that's inside this and then the needle that's on the slide actually sits in there and you can see the needles tapered and as the needle moves up and down in there it allows more fuel to pass as it reduces the restriction allows your bike to make more power as the, th as the throttle is open the slide comes up allows more fuel to pass and keeps your bike running nicely now, I'm not going to be careful to not mix these up because where these actually sit up in the, in the carburetor body these wear slightly oval I can't see anywhere on that but these wear slightly oval and they match to the needle so that's our main jets and emulsion tubes removed I'm now going to remove the slow jets in each carb again they're very tight make sure you make sure you're using a screwdriver a good quality screwdriver that fits properly and they sit down in holes in the carbs and you can't just fish them out but 
seeing this is the slow jet or the idle jet. And these carbs, they happen to be a size 35. And that will vary bike to bike. They are both exactly the same. I'm going to just remove this stop screw. This is the idle stop screw. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the floats off here. Now they pivot on a little pin here. And that pin is actually held in by the float bolt which just pushes through. So just take that pin out and I'm going to gently lift away the float. And on it you can see hanging the float valve, the neat float needle valve. And this is what actually allows fuel into the carburetors from your tank. So if you've got if you've got carburetors that are flooding, quite often this seal is either worn or there is dirt in the seat which is in the carburetor here. Again, just going to do the same on both carbs. Sometimes these pins are a tight fit and you need to gently tap them out, but you need to be very careful because there are only aluminium bodies and these are really easy to break. So we've now got the carburetors stripped down pretty much as far as we really need to go. I'm actually going to completely split them down though and actually separate the bodies. I don't recommend you do that necessarily. The reason I don't really recommend that is you then have to rebalance them. There's a balance screw here and unless you've got the equipment to do that then you wouldn't, you're not going to be able to do it and the equipment while it's not particularly expensive is another expense that you might not need if you're doing this for yourself. So I'm going to actually split the bodies of these carburetors apart which means I need to take off the choke linkage which is here and these metal, these metal bars that go across here which actually hold the carb bodies together and it looks like I need a bigger screwdriver for those. Now these screws may be quite tight so I might have to uh, I might have to grab the body in the vise so that I can get them undone. So, so I've got soft jaws in my vise which means that I can grip these and not damage them and these screws are very tight they've probably seized in a little bit and I just can't hold the bodies of the carbs tight enough to undo these screws with it just loose on the bench again I've got soft jaws in the vise being very careful where I choose to grip these carbs so that I don't damage them in any way I'm not actually gripping them all that tight in the vise, just enough to... Just enough to hold it. Now if you've got a stubborn screw like that, that doesn't want to move, if you put your screwdriver in, apply a fair bit of torque, and give them a tap quite often, they will come undone. It's not foolproof by any means, but it also prevents you wringing the head out of the screw. So as well as these joining bolts, I've also got to remove the bolts that hold the choke assembly on. And that just lifts away Careful not to lose the little washers. And we need to unhook the spring as well. And then it will just lift out of the carburetor body with a bit of wiggling around. Like I said, I don't necessarily recommend that you split carb bodies unless you really, really need to. If you've got no problems with fuel leaking between carbs or anything like that, I wouldn't I wouldn't bother taking them apart because you do need that specialist equipment to rebalance the carbs when you're finished. And I'm just going to back off the balance screw in the linkage. There's a little spring in there. And it's going to make it a lot easier for me to just 
carefully take them apart. Now you notice there's two springs. There's two springs falling out of there. One is from the throttle balance linkage, and the other one sits on the end of the throttle shaft. That's quite common between for that to be the case. And then we have the fuel inlet tube and this is our overflow tube which are very very loose fitting in the body so you can see there's an, quite a lot of corrosion on here so I'm going to have to replace that o-ring because it's, it's in a really bad way that would have resulted in a fuel leak if I just put these carburetors straight on the, straight on the bike so this is why I take them completely apart. So we've now completely separated our carburetor bodies. You can see the only thing that we've got in there is the throttle blades. And I never remove them. Never ever remove them. Unless you have a really, really good reason to never remove them. There is no need to. They can be cleaned with them in. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the choke mechanisms out of the carburetor bodies. Well, these have a uh, hex body on them, which you can only just see under all the grime. So I'm just going to find something that will undo them. They're not done up very tight, but I need to find something that will undo them without damaging them, because these bodies are plastic. And there's just enough room for me to get a socket in there and undo them. And this is the fuel enrichment device that you can see there. Again, it's going to have to be cleaned before it goes back together. And I'm not. I'm going to make sure I don't muddle them up between the two carbs. And they're not particularly tight in there. They're just not very easy to get at. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this bracket off here. If I can get the screw to come undone. And it's the throttle cable bracket. I'm just taking it off because then I can more easily get everywhere to clean it. Again, doesn't matter. It only fits on this one. So there we go. Just two carburetor bodies completely stripped down. That's as far apart as you can take them without taking the throttle blade out, which you're just not going to do. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to give these carburetor bodies a wash off in solvent just to get the worst of the grime off them and then I'm going to put them in the ultrasonic cleaner and leave them in there for 20 minutes which will take a little while because the cleaner is actually only big enough for me to get one of these in at a time. So each of these is going to go in the ultrasonic bath for 20 minutes after I've given it a quick scrub. So everything's now been through ultrasonic cleaning and I've blown it all out with compressed air as well. So now we're going to start doing the reassembly again. I'm going to start with this carburetor body. I'm actually going to more or less assemble the carburetor bodies before I put them back together as a pair. So let's make a start on that. You can see they're all nice and clean now. I am just going to blow them over with compressed air again. I've also laid some paper down on my bench just to make sure everything stays super clean. If you're ever working on carburetors you want to make sure that you definitely don't get any dirt in them. Just blowing that over with compressed air again, paying particular attention to the small passageways for the idle jet. You might not be able to see but there's a tiny hole in the bottom here which is where the fuel mixture comes through for idle. Uh, they're very easily clogged. So I'm going to start with putting the emulsion tube, uh, the main jet, and the idle jet back in. So we, here we have the main jet, the emulsion tube, and then this is the needle seat that sits in the carburetor body. Uh, these have a rounded, slightly rounded end and an end with a big chamfer in. It's that chamfered end that goes in first. So we just drop that in there. 
This is our emulsion tube. Again, it's been through the ultrasonic bath, so it's all nice and clean. Just going to screw that into carburetor body. If we can get our needle seat to sit in there. And we're just going to gently tighten that. It doesn't need to be very tight. And then we're going to pop our main jet in. Now on some bikes, uh, the main jets are different sizes between carburetors, especially on four cylinder bikes. It's quite common for the inside two cylinders to have a slightly different size idle jet, uh, main jet than the outside two cylinders. And the reason for that is the cylinders run at slightly different temperatures and to get optimum performance or optimum emissions, they sometimes use a slightly smaller or slightly larger idle jet. In this case, both of them are the same, so we've got no problems there. And we've got our tiny little idle jet. So we're going to pop that back in its, back in its position. And again, going to tighten that down. So that's all of our jets back in the carburetor. So you can see that needle seat just sticking through into the bore of the carburetor there where the needle drops down into. Now we're going to fit a new idle mixture screw and that has a little spring on it and then a washer and then an o-ring on the end of that. So spring, washer and an o-ring. And that o-ring is there to provide a seal. And what we're going to do is we're going to give these a, an initial setting. The initial setting for these idle mixture screws is done from being just seated. So we do that by just only just tightening it enough, not cranking it down. And then the book requires, so the service manual suggests two and a half turns out being a good starting position. And then to be adjusted from there. So that's set that at two and a half turns out. We don't need this, this is a plug to go in here. So if it was an emissions controlled bike, We'd fit that, but we don't need to fit that anyway. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to fit our new float needle valve with our original float. And there's a little wire loop on the top of it, which hopefully you can see. And that just hooks onto the float there. And then we lower that as an assembly into the carb. And we find our pivot float pivot and just push that through. Now because we've changed some of these components we actually need to check the float height now. So the service manual calls for a float height of 17 millimeters so we've got vernier here I'm going to set that to 17 mil and then what it says is with the carb body at a 45 degree angle. The distance from this mating face to here should be 17 millimetres. So I'm just going to hold the body at roughly 45 degrees and have a look and see where our float height is in relation to that. And that is absolutely perfect, that one. If we needed to adjust the float height, then we'd bend this little metal tab very slightly it's that metal tab that actually pushes on the top of the float needle valve and pushes it closed. That's all we need to do in the bottom of this carburetor. So I'm going to put the float bowl back on and I've got a new gasket here. I'm just going to lay that in the base of here. Now I prefer to not put any sealer on these. Some people do and that's okay. But if you're working with them off the bike, you can just carefully assemble them like that. And then I've got some new screws for the float bowl. That's the original ones were 
quite badly damaged. Rose said about using a JIS screwdriver. I'm working on these. I've replaced these with uh, high tensile cap head screws, which are much easier to remove in the future. So just tighten all of those down. No need to go too mad with them, just enough to stop them coming undone. This is our float bowl drain screw. I'm just going to check that's tight, which it is. So that's the bottom half of our carburetor more or less finished off. I'm going to pop the throttle cable bracket back on here. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put our cold start choke fuel enrichment device back in here, which is here. Again, this has all been through the ultrasonic cleaner. So I'm just going to pop that in there. Use the socket that we had earlier to just do that up. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to drop our slide back in here. This is the slide and it's rubber diaphragm. Again, it's been through the ultrasonic tank and is clean. And before we put it in there, we've got our needle jet, which drops in there. And then we have a plastic retainer, which actually holds the, the needle in, and the spring that goes on top of it. These will only fit one way round, if you can see, but the, the tags either side are offset to the body of the slide. So drop that in here and make sure that the needle drops into making sure the needle drops into the emulsion tube in the main jet. As long as this hasn't been damaged, the seal should fit directly into the recess in the car body. And then we just take, take our cap. There is no orientation for these on this particular bike. And when you're doing these up, just holding the top down with my fingers. I'm going to get two in each corner, not very tight. And then the other two in to make sure that I don't pinch the rubber diaphragm at all. And then I'm just going to snug them down again, don't need to be too tight. This is only a plastic top. And there we have one mostly reassembled carburetor. The only thing that I've still got to put on is the coolant, coolant connection. Um, which I can't put on at the moment, or I don't want to put on at the moment. I'll put that on when, when the whole carbs are back together. So now I'm going to do exactly the same thing with the other carburetor body. And there we go, another nice clean carburetor. You can check that the slides have sealed nicely by gently lifting them and letting them fall back down. If they get stuck or fall very quickly, it means that the diaphragm is either torn, you've pinched it, or it's not sealing properly. So you will have to look elsewhere. So I think you'll agree they're considerably cleaner, look much better than they did when we started. So what I need to do now is put the carburetors back together as a pair. So to do that, this is the fuel inlet, the o-rings on it were perished, so it would have leaked fuel had we not done anything with this but I have fitted new o-rings to this. I happen to have some in my stock as that were the correct size and the correct material. So these are Viton o-rings. 
and I've also put new o-rings on either end of the overflow or the breather for the carburetors. So what we're going to do now is just get these installed into one half of the carburetor body and to just help those o-rings sit into the carbs I'm just going to pop a little bit of oil on them so they slide it in nice and easily and we don't damage them. Just push the breather in and then our fuel inlet carefully align everything. So a little bit of a wiggle to just seat, seat those o-rings being careful that we don't trap anything. I'm going to take our joint plates and the screws from them just get these carbs joined back together so I'm going to get two of the screws in first just loose so there's still a little bit of movement just going to get these others lined up so there we have the breather and the fuel inlet fitted with new o-rings. So the next thing we can do is assemble, reassemble the linkage between the two carburetors. This one is held closed by its spring. This one you can see moves around independently. So this carburetor is the primary one and then we balance this carburetor to this one. At the moment the throttle stop screw is not in so this carburetor actually is fully shut. So all we're going to do is I'm actually going to set it so that this carburetor is fully shut as well. As you can see it's either can be slightly open or we can completely close it. So I'm actually just going to set them so that they fully close and then we can't actually set the final balance until, until, the, until the engine is running. So there's a spring that sits in this linkage, it sits over a little boss on the bottom of that linkage there. So I'm just going to hook it, hook it back in. Now you can fight these in in other ways. But I prefer to do it that way. Other people might have other techniques, but that works for me. And then we've actually got the adjustment screw, which also has a little spring on it, which then screws into the top of the linkage. The reason these have a little spring on them is just to stop them vibrating undone. Like I say, it's only a very rough setting at the moment. It's just to get us started. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop this other joining plate on. This is one that has slightly bigger screws in it. Just tighten all of those up. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to refit the throttle stop screw. And again, I'm only going to roughly set this at this point so now it's just touching the throttle stop lever so I'm just going to give it a couple of turns just to crack the throttles open the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to assemble the choke mechanism so we've got our lever we've got some little washers which go on the car body and we need to hook the lever itself over the choke mechanisms and also make sure the spring is hooked over the end of that carburetor there like that and then we have another couple of washers and the screw I'm just going to put one of those screws in My hand just to hold it down or the washer on the screw tighten those screws up check everything works now I need to fit the choke cable bracket on here because I didn't fit it when I fitted the top onto the carb, so I'm going to fit that. 
The last thing we need to do is just refit the coolant T's. So just a little bit of grease on the on the O-rings there just to help them slide in nicely. And then just the little retainers. And finally, I'm just gonna pop coolant hose back on. So there we go. Two rebuilt carburetors ready to go onto the engine once I've rebuilt it. And the rebuild process for most carburetors is very similar. Um, irrespective of what bike it came from. Nearly all these Keyhine CVK carbs are all the same. They just have slightly different ball sizes. Um, and a lot of other other carburetors are, are very, very similar. So the Makunis are a common one and they're also incredibly similar. I hope you found this video interesting or useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button down below and I'll be back again really soon with more new content where we'll be looking at rebuilding this engine.